shit. Big shit, big shit, big shit. Huh. It's a unique hustle, nigga. Big shit, big shit, big shit, big shit. Huh. Name another podcast like this. Check it, check it, check it. This is a unique hustle. It's your boy ECEO, and I'm here with the lovely official Miss Jamaica. What's going on, baby? Nothing, nothing, Man, it's going down, man. Hey, man. <laughs> we got somebody in here today, you know, she's experienced. <laughs> she's not new to being in front of the cameras. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure she's used to that, too. Mm -hmm. She's been around for a while. The people know her. Mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I ain't never said that before. Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> Taysha Alexa, how you doing, baby? I am great. How are y'all? Man, you here. You in the building, I'm man. I'm in here. So, okay. um, yeah, it's good to meet you. Nice meeting you, too. Man, you cute little girl, ain't she? Yes, sir. Little lady. Is she a lady? Lady. I look like a little girl, though. You know? <laughs> yeah. Let me find out. No, you ought to be happy about that. I am. For real. I am. That's dope. I think my parents. I think my parents. Did, are, are they like that, too? Yeah, they look pretty young. Wow, that's dope. Where you where are you originally from? You from Dallas? I'm originally from Columbus, Ohio. Whoa! Yeah, a lot of people don't know that. I didn't know that. I'm originally from Columbus, Ohio, and then I grew up in Fort Worth. Oh, you from Stop Six? You know, I mean, graduated from well, Dunbar. Red, you, know you would do wow. something to you. You better put your purse and up. <laughs> don't, don't walk down the alley late at night. Look, I don't do nothing she unless I'm provoked. Alexis, okay. On the move. Don't let that cute face fool you. <laughs> I'm with you on that one, <laughs> for real. So, so okay, let's let's go back. Yes, let's okay. go. How back. far back? As far back as you can remember. Damn. Okay. You about to be really talking about some? No. Well, well, go ahead. Well, let's just <laughs> tell, tell us, us about how it. We ain't got nothing but time. Okay, know? let's do it. it. Let's do it. How was it growing up in Fort Worth when you were a kid? And what about Ohio? You, let's go all the way back. I don't know how old you were. Ohio, I don't really like remember because I was, was I was still very young. That's okay. why I said as far back as she yeah, can remember. Yeah, so it would be it would be Fort Worth for okay. me. That's where I was raised. Dope. So okay, how wrong. old were you when you got to Fort Worth? Uh, three. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I think that, that was right. about. Well, she straight stop six baby. Let's go. Yeah. I think, <laughs> <laughs> I think it was about three. So I I was raised in Fort Worth, but mm -hmm. growing up in Fort Worth. I was always the sore thumb. I always stuck out. Like yeah. I was always very different from everybody. Yeah. Um, small town, but like I was one of them kids that like I always watched a lot of music videos. I was always like into like music. So it was like my escape from everything. So I was the different one. I was the one that kind of was cool with everybody. I, I'm still like that. I had friends that walk all different walks of mm. life. So that was me and Fort Worth. I was kind of like the person that was just like neutral to everything. I was cool with everybody. Like I could be with the hood, I could be with the suburb kids, I could yeah. be with everybody. Yeah. So that's how I was raised. And my parents are originally from Michigan. What yeah. part? So my dad's from Jackson. Okay. So not too far from Detroit and my mom's from Ann Arbor. Okay. okay. So we were we were first generation South. So being the first kids like in the South, like I was still raised like like you know, like parents up north, it was like a little different. Like we, right. We weren't taught to say like yes, ma'am, and no, sir, and stuff like like that. that like that's unheard of. It's wow. more looked at as like this ain't no slave. You know, wow. this ain't no slave shit. So, wow, that's yeah, the way it so went down. You, yeah. So it, we were just raised very different. But that's then it's dope, like we though. were we were. And that's in the so South, funny man. when you said that because I remember my mom moved here from Jamaica, mm -hmm. and I would always tell, and the kids would answer her and say, "Yes, ma'am," or whatever. She's like, "Don't call me, don't that. call me no ma'am." <laughs> what she called me, ma'am? But. Back home, I remember when I was a kid, and yeah. I and my mom would call me, and I'd be like, "Yes," mm -hmm. and my grandma would be like, "Don't answer how to say yes, mom." Yes. That's how we yes, mom or yes, mommy or you exactly. know whatever. Same it way. wasn't just yes. Same you know way. what I mean? So it's just the same thing here. It's just that you can't just be as a child saying yes or no. Yeah, or, you know, exactly. You have to say, I was yeah, raised you the same way. You act like y'all really. Let me just be honest with y'all. You <laughs> niggas, man. You know, you niggas better say ma'am and sir and all that. We are in Ooh, that America. Ooh, that woman cringe. Really? What? She would cringe. Why? She, Why did, you, she didn't want me called ma'am. She was like, we are not in the South. Why are you serious? So the South is the only one do that? Yeah, she felt like that was like a thing. Well, I'm going to be honest. Different. Because of slavery. That's what yeah. she was saying. Yeah, she was like, hmm. I don't want to be called I never thought that. I never thought of that. I never thought of I thought it was a, 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 it's a southern sign thing. of respect. Yeah, it's a southern right. thing. But you say it's not. It's not. You still think it's not. I mean, I say yes. I, I, I just want to know like, what you think. Because then when you watch a movie, so you very, then... you very just, yeah. I'm a, I mean... No, you're a young type person. No, I say yes. Yes. Same thing. Yes. Real fly, though. <laughs> I already know you're not really that. I'm be like... No, no, we couldn't say so yes. So it's an old... You know. Did you go to school here? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You gonna say yeah to me? <laughs> 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We are on boss talk like, right now. You know what I'm talking about? So, you know. Yeah. We're not too formal. Yeah. So but it's yes. like, so in school, did, did the teacher say yes, ma'am? Because this was a thing. Yes, it was. Um, How did you get around it? How did I get around saying that? Um, I was very quiet, actually. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I was so, a quiet kid. If you was very quiet, so was you quiet so you wouldn't have to say yes, ma'am? Yeah. I, I was quiet so I didn't have to answer nobody. I hated being questioned and stuff like this. I was I was one of those kids that was very much so like to myself and my imagination was like. So you weren't a trouble kid then? No, I wasn't like really or a Or a teacher's pet, which one? Kind of. I was kind of like the teacher's pet, but then I was cool. So I was cool with everybody mm-hmm. at the same time. But like my teacher was like, oh, we just love teachers. She's so good. But teenage years was just a little bit different for me. I was, whew, I was wild. What was the wildest thing you did as a teenager? Let me just tell you, she the was wild. fast. I could tell the what she said. That. No, yeah, I she wasn't was fast. fast. She said no, it. No, I was fast. No, let's no see, I wasn't. I wasn't. Well, let's talk about wild. What no. you do? You had a what you had a third eight? Fights. No, a lot of oh, fights. No, you had I a third did. eight snub no? No, I did fight a lot though. <laughs> okay, I fought a lot. Boys. Girls, anybody, anybody. It, it didn't like matter. you again? Was it because you were small or you were like, I gotta get with you? I think it was just like they test you. Yeah, they tested me. Did you ever like, have oh, a she knife? She, no, I ain't care. Well, no I got a knife man. pulled on me when I was like eleven in Las Vegas. We had just moved up there, <laughs> and uh, I was I was bad. You know, I whooped somebody. Yeah, he was. So bad. I, I I had a fight with this boy at school. Right, I had just moved to Vegas, Northside, and I was in at Vegas? school. Yeah, and I was walking home. Me and my brother and sister. And the same boy I had fought, I don't know why he lived on my way home. <laughs> he jumped, he jumped out with a knife and was like, what? I was like, whoa. What? And we were country. We had never seen it like that. And I never walked that way again for about six months. What did months. you do? You ran? Yeah, I had to run. <laughs> <laughs> and what do you do when somebody put a knife out and you yeah. 11? Right. What do you do? Run. <laughs> you not have to fight him. Oh, I didn't have no gun or nothing. Right. I just like I, I, tr- I already whooped him. See in Jamaica, you have rocks everywhere. You just pick up a rock and start throwing See? it <laughs> and run and run. <laughs> so what did you do that, that caused the you to feel like you was bad? Like the craziest <clears throat> thing that you can remember having? To- oh, I moved out of the house when I was fifteen. Really? Mm-hmm. You don't look. And like you were the raised type. with your mom and dad. I was typically yeah. Well, my parents lived in two separate homes, but I spent. Same amount of time my mama and my daddy. Like, my daddy was very much so in my life. So, so you didn't feel like he was absent, so to say? In, at certain times. How old were you when they broke up? Five. So. Yeah, so for the longest, I felt like it was, you know, like my fault. You know, I blame myself a lot. Mm, why? So that's when I, you I became was, a troubled child. Was yeah, I was, a, I was a daddy's girl. Okay. So okay. when my dad left. And, and then you stayed and, with mom. And I say, well, mom, so I felt like, was it because of me? You know, mm-hmm. I felt like most were, kids always yeah, feel that that's way. A, that's a, yeah, I felt I like I didn't feel that way. <laughs> Are you no. an only child? No, no. How many of y'all? There's six of us total. Wow. And you the youngest? No, I'm in the middle. You're in the middle. Yeah. Okay. I'm in the middle. So you, you really, you, you was basically feeling like, okay, he left because of me. Out of all these other jokers, it was just me. Well, at the time, it was only me and my two sisters. Okay. And my little brothers came later. And okay. Then I have an older half brother. Okay. Okay. And so, so yeah, sorry, um, yeah, I felt, I felt like it was, you know, my fault because I was the closest to both of my parents. I'm still like. Did close you used to, to visit both. like your dad? Yeah, somewhere? yeah. We spent like summers there. He lived in Fort Worth. No, my dad actually lived in Dallas. So my he, mom lived you in get Fort to Worth. come to the D. What part? Yeah. Uh, Carrollton. Oh, that's okay. the good part. Yeah. So you yeah. went from one style of living exactly. to the next. Exactly. <laughs> so my life was always about duality. You right. know, so like with my mom, we lived in the projects. We lived Which on Section dope. 8. Which is dope. We lived on food stamps. Me like, too. All, it all made you life. versatile. Well, no, no, my, no, no, no. It, it made you strong. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was but on then food my dad, But then my dad's house, it was totally different. Like we lived in North Dallas. Like, yeah. We shopping like, at Sam's yeah, y'all Food had, Club. Y'all had, we yeah. learning how to sell candy. Like yeah. we doing all kinds of stuff. Entrepreneurship at an early age. Exactly stuff like yeah, that. But yeah. it was different, you but, know. But back to the projects you go. Yeah. yeah, I always had to go back there. Did you ever ask your dad, why do we have to live over there? Why can't I live with you? Yeah, and he, yeah, that was a big thing actually. Like that he was a told big question. You I couldn't. You could. He was like, I can't. Like I'm over here. I have another family as well. Yeah. So, you know. But as a kid, that made you feel probably like an outcast. Yeah. Like, so that's am why I, not I was good a rebel. En- right. Am I not good enough to be over here with your other family? Exactly. Are we about to pull, pull up out of but, there. But go back to. I know what you're trying to look, do. No, go back to <laughs> the reason it. why you, you say that you um, 
as a high school kid, what mm-hmm. was the biggest thing that you did? Yeah. And it was living on my own at 15. Well, yeah, not, necessarily, so was, not necessarily like living by myself, but typically I was alone. Like I was living with different people. So did you and, just tell your mom that I'm well, deuces, I'm yeah, gone? Yeah, so what happened was my mom um, was dating a guy. Like my brother's dad, he was 20 years younger than my mom. So it was almost like having like a, a bigger, like an older brother in wow. the house. Mm-hmm. Wow. He wasn't mature at all. He was doing all kinds of stuff. And I was the person that always seen everything. Yeah. You know, and one time I remember I came in the house and he was doing something to my mom. I'm like, yo, if you don't let my mama go, like, <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna it's, go, yeah, it's going to go might down. Just kill you. And you had two older sisters. Where were they? Yeah, so my oldest sister is actually 12 years older than So me. they left. Yeah, so, so they she's already gone. Left. She has her okay. own family. Yeah, so she there by herself. Exactly. And then my youngest sister, she's three years younger than me, but she was so young. She don't remember no, no. much. So it was me. Right. You know what I mean? Right. So Did you jump on him? I wanted to. But my mom was like, no, "Of course, stop. She, yeah, yeah." And she was like, "Just leave," and I'm like, "Just leave." That's like, a, that's like baby boy. <laughs> yeah, and she was like, "Just leave." I'm like, "For right now." She's like, "Nah, get up out of here." Like, you need to go. And you did. And I left. Did you cry? I did. I cried a lot. That did you? It, it, just like baby boy. Just, just like baby boy. Yeah, there you go. Like, he I cried baby too. Boy mama. When he was like, "You leave. Like, don't call me. me. Don't call me." me. me. Right. When he start beating on right. you, yeah. Beating your ass. There you go. There you go. It was a baby boy moment for real. Wow. Did, when you but, seen the movie, did you think about it? I I did. My cousin did too because he called me. But like, man, that movie hit hit no, like home. I was like, damn. I remember he was going through that. It did hit home for me. Like for real, he was crazy. He was thrown off. I knew he was. I knew it got him because he's like, this is the best. Movie I ever watched in my life. <laughs> said, yeah, nigga, it he brought said he back was memory. Watching his yeah, life. That's, like, yeah, that's right. So you felt that. Mm-hmm. Wow. But with your mom dating somebody twenty years younger, because mm-hmm. was there ever a time when he tried to hit on you? No. You know that's a question that my mom still asks me to this day. She's like, did he ever like try? Anything? I said, no, nah, never. If anything, it was more like vol- like violent type of things, like trying to discipline us and taking it too far, you know, something like <laughs> that. The, them be the worst ones. You know, but it was never nothing yeah. like, you know, okay. inappropriate or anything okay. like that. I yeah. see that on, on, I think it was Growing Up Hip Hop where the dude comes in, I think just he was crazy. He was just, Peppa and he was going, all right, we having a family <laughs> meeting, but they don't know this nigga. <laughs> right, it's like, and who are you? They don't know him, you just pull up on anything. the block. Yeah. And that was me. Like, who are you to tell me anything? I got a daddy. <laughs> so what did your daddy say whenever oh, she put you out? He wasn't trying to hear that anyway. Oh, um, well, when I originally left, I went to like my godmother's house. I went to her house, and she was by herself. Mm-hmm. And um, she was cool. It was it was cool. She was by herself. She had a foreign exchange student mm-hmm. at her uh, at her house. She was from Laos. Uh, my godmother is from Puerto Rico, like straight from Puerto Rico. Mm-hmm. Wow. Mm-hmm. So it was like I had that part of me too. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like I had so many different parts of me, like. When I was in that house, that's how I was raised. You know, like mm-hmm. I was raised like. But don't you know that it's only God that was molding you? No, that's for the real. dope part about it. Because I can relate to stuff. so many people. Right, it, He opened up so many avenues to give you that imagination of know how to deal with, as you said, all adversity. Those that, right, and it was always thrown at me. It was always thrown at me. So it's just and you like, dealt with it very well. Yeah, I just dealt with it. That's I didn't yeah. back down from it. I was just like, hey, this is my situation. So really, let's keep it rolling. So. As you as you get older, now you you know you a runaway, pretty yeah. much you I a runaway. Was. <laughs> so I you was just a really just shifting around town <laughs> yeah. with a bag and you a right. stick. You know what no, I'm talking about? Y'all I legit had a big bag. High school? Did you finish <laughs> high school doing so all of that? That's crazy. I actually dropped out of high school. Get a lot out of here. Don't know that. Yeah, I dropped out for three months. Wow. And I came back into school. It was one of my friends that conv- convinced me, like, yo, you need to get back in school. You too smart for this. You need to graduate. All that. So I ended up getting back in school, and uh, and you were living with your godmother at that time. I was, li- I don't know where I was. Baby, living at that no, time. she was no, shifting I was, I, and yeah, moving. I shifted. Oh, matter of fact, it was a family that took me in. It was a friend of mine that was on the step team. Her mom took me in. That's she, how you start liking the music. Um, it was how I started liking everything in entertainment. She I'm, taught I'm me saying, everything. Yeah, yeah, she yeah. taught me how to hustle. That's what I'm thinking. She taught mm-hmm. me like how to get in the clubs and sell a table to somebody like oh, I really? like she taught me shout all out that. to what's her name oh i call her mama mama mm-hmm. shout out to her mama you have so many okay. mamas i do i have a lot of mamas <laughs> so did you so when this happened mama cat. as you start getting into this okay you drop out of high school yeah, for three I dropped months out. dropped out for three months then you come back I and went you finish school. school number five of my class dope awesome 
Yo, Yo, with a 3.8 GPA. My daughter need to be here to hear this, which she makes straight A's, but let's keep going. Yeah. Uh, so so you really just went back and was like, how did you shift and get it, get it right? In the it, midst of all this moving around. Honestly, it was my track coach. Wow. She like, she saved my life. So you did track, you did step. You Could did, you wait a minute, stop. Dang. Yeah, I didn't let nothing stop me. What did you do in track? I ran the four by one in open hurdles. Seriously. You're so little and you did hurdles? That's oh, what yeah, I'm trying to say. Run. You know, everybody, else, this is not the army. You're not going to come on here. No, you can be run. anything you want to like be that? up in here. Run. Listen, man, really you're not going to do that up in here. You're not going to come up in here and, and be like, be all that you can be. <laughs> 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 okay. So you can do the hurdles and everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But you like. I, call, I actually uh, did. Uh, and how tall are you? Five, six. Wow. Yeah, I can really run. That was like my little escape. So my track coach was the one that was like. She seen me as a troubled teenager, and she was like, "Oh, I'm I'm saving this one for real." Like, wow. she kept me like up under her. She gave me my first journal. She That's taught me God. how to do all that. Like, she always kept up with me. Did she have other kids? No, she didn't have no kids. Do you That's keep up with her now? It. So I haven't been able to keep up with her because she bounces around a lot. She's yeah. still a track coach still to this wow. day. Like, she ran with Marion Jones and everything. Hmm. She went to OU. She okay. she had a big name, so like. Um, She's still doing That's her coaching. And, yeah, man. she's still doing her coaching and everything. But I ran into her not too long ago after a gig at uh, Fuel City. What did she say? And she was just like. She over there getting some tacos. She was getting some tacos. I told you I knew that what she was doing. With her husband. And her husband was like, you're Tasia. I already know who you are. Oh, wow. He knew exactly who I was and everything. He's like, she always talks about you. I mean, wow, like that's all these years. So you like, know that's God. I, yeah. You know me, I'm a God man. So yeah. I, I talk about God yeah. on every situation. When it get good, it's yeah. God. My, my when it went bad, me. it was the devil. Yeah. So listen, man, that's dope. Yeah. I like it. She saved me. So I, as a child, in okay, so when you were in high school, yeah, what did you want to be? I didn't know. Didn't I was know. one of those people that was confused. I didn't know what I wanted to do, but I was good at a lot of things. So I had like a very artistic background. My mom always sent us to like a art school during the mm -hmm, summer, mm -hmm. and I was the one that had like my stuff on display at the Fort Worth Art Museum and stuff like that at nine years old. Did your mom support you as you was going through all of these different things, and she seen you going through? Did she get it right somewhere in the midst of it? I can say that she was always super supportive, although she didn't always know how to show up. Yeah, you know what I'm but saying. But like she would like, do what she could. But what about her mama? How was she? Oh, very kind of what standoffish. Yeah, very standoffish. Not very affectionate. That's, that's what I'm trying He's to tell you. He's just wondering where it I just know, yeah, I know yeah, it's that, stemming from but, something. But that's, and that's, that's a conversation we've had recently. Yeah, my uh, my dad was like that. And and, and not, not like exactly like you were going yeah. through, but he had his issues. But I couldn't blame him after I looked at, you know. Not knowing. Well, yeah, because his father, the way their relationship was. So you have to have some compassion mm -hmm. for the people who go through stuff, too. Yeah. I think a lot of times we get angry. And angry, you know, pretty much it's expresses itself and out of control. Yeah, and our parents you know are everyday saying? people too. Exactly, people just, just people. Like us. That's exactly right. But as we get older and you know all of these things and if you're still blessed enough to have your parents or mm -hmm. your grandparents, I always say sit down and have a discussion. Yeah. Um, because a lot of us were raised where you, you don't talk to your older parent. Your yeah. parents, grandparents, anybody older, you don't have those discussions. Yeah. Cause you're still a child no matter how old you get. Yeah. But if you don't bring awareness to certain people, anybody older, younger, any, they don't know that what they're doing is incorrect. Right. And there's no such thing as too old to change. So that's what I, I totally always agree. say. Let me ask you and this. I, Let me ask a couple yeah, questions. Yeah. Well, as uh, far as you, you know, with your mm -hmm. mother, you know, we close knit it right now. Mm -hmm. Do you ever ask about some of the things concerning some of the things you were challenged yes. with when you was growing up? Yes, and that's the reason yeah, why I said that. It's from it's from um, experience because like yeah. from my personal experience, it was a case, that's why I always say no matter how much you, when you're raising kids, mm -hmm. no matter how much you are trying to do everything you can, there's always something you're missing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because as a parent, we overcompensate for something that we were missing in our childhood. I do agree. And by doing that, you miss on something else. So um, my mom would always tell me, would always give me hugs and tell me I love you, but she would never say I'm proud of you. So that's something wow. I was missing. I felt like, you know, it's three of us. I'm mm. the only girl, but you never said all the things I've done. You never turned to me and say, I'm proud of you. I'm proud of what you mm. did. Mm -hmm. You accomplished, you know? So, so always, as I got know, older. that was my dad for me. Yeah. But my yeah. dad was the he never did one. that. Oh, he was oh, the affectionate one. My dad's the of course you're the one. baby girl. But yeah. what, when you think about it, you know we can find excuses at all mm -hmm. times on things that parents didn't do. But you have to bring it up because yeah. if no, you bring awareness, then 
they can correct and, and start agree, to say something. I agree with yeah. I agree with that. If you get the opportunity to bring right. it up, bring it up. Yeah. But also, you gotta like my dad. He wasn't affecting. I told you he never hugged me till mm-hmm. I graduated high school. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, he taught me how to work. He taught me how to be a man. You know what I'm saying? He taught me how to. Mm-hmm. He instilled that work ethic in me. So if I look at it and scale it, it, it certain things I didn't get, but certain things I got too much of because mm-hmm. of the way right. he was raised. I feel mm-hmm. it. So you and got. I feel like, yeah, that's, you see it. You yeah. see it in both of your parents and what mm-hmm. they went through. So why blame them for something? When you get older, you learn to forgive, right? That's crazy. Cause it's like it's like when you get older, you know, it is in a certain age, and you got that type of knowledge. It's like you start to reparent your parents. Yeah. Right. Exactly. You know, like yeah. my parents you, come it's to me. So true. It's so mm-hmm. true. They come to me all the time. They're like, so like. I'm helping them figure out things yeah. with themselves. They said yeah. once a man, twice a child. Yeah. So that's and really like helping what it them is. unpack some things that's that like dope. I've already addressed. Does, how does it make you feel? I'm just like wow, like they they really look like in a sense look up to me in a sense. Mm-hmm. Like my mom, like you understand this, you understand that. I don't get it. Like help me understand. Beautiful. Like I was telling her, like you need you got some shadow work to do. You need to work on some things from the past. And she's like, how do I do that? Wow. I was like, you got to open your heart to refill those feelings. Wow. But for me, it was God. Mm-hmm. That's the only way. I, I mean, you have to read and research for me. Yeah. For me, I don't push what I do on everybody else. But yeah. for me, I have to open up the word. I have to, you know, put things in me mm-hmm. that pretty much builds integrity and right. these morals. I can't just go by, oh, I'm going to do it. You know, no, right, right. I got to read. I got to figure this thing out. I got to pray. I got to have yeah. a relationship with God. I got to pray with my wife. Mm-hmm. I got to pray with my kids. Yeah. That's the way I enforce the That's the way I get it. Yeah. I, and go back to what you said. I, um, you don't blame them for anything Mm-mm. that they do. You still forgive. Mm-hmm. But it's just that in order for you to correct certain things, because we're all supposed to strive to improve our right, life. Right. In, or, in order for us to know that we do anything incorrect, right. the way how we say things, because everybody has communication problems. Nobody yeah, has for real. Nobody's perfect, perfect communication. Yeah. So in order for that to be fixed, somebody has to bring something to your awareness to say, this is how you say things. I perceived it like this, that, right. uh, whatever. And then you're like, oh, you know what? But Maybe next time I'll say, try to say it in a different way. But I'll way. say exactly. this, though. Even when you do that, um, it's like planting a seed. You don't know when that it doesn't happen. You don't know. The, it you don't know when it's going to grow. Exactly. It's up to God when it happens. Right. You're right. So you just can, even if it's your parents, even if it's your friend, you it's still the same rules apply. Mm-hmm. You're just planting a seed. Mm-hmm. You're telling somebody something that can help them. But don't you go getting mad or discouraged when they don't change right. when you want them exactly. to, mm-hmm. because it's up to God when that change happens. But Definitely. the problem is, a lot of people take on other people's issues as their assignment. There you go. And they feel like it's that's their assignment, you know, to help someone heal. You know what I'm saying? But like mm-hmm. you say, you're supposed to plant the seed and keep it moving. You but know? Yeah, yeah. And dust your feet if you have to. Right. Yeah. yeah all you, that apply. You All that energy, you ha- you hold on to all That's that. right. Yeah. So cause, and it affects you. And that's dope because now you, when you do that, it, everything that God shows me, it's like he's showing you a way not only to help and affect others, but to help yourself as yeah. well while you're doing it. Yeah. So sure. all that stuff is going on at the same time. Energy. At the same time. Yeah. But people don't understand that, though, because like I, I, I learn how to be ver- um, vocal now when I say certain things. So a lot of times when I'm telling somebody advice or something or I'm telling them um, something, my personal you know, experiences, mm-hmm. what I've been through, and I'm looking for that to help them. And I said, the reason why I say all of this, I'm not just saying it for you. I'm saying it for me because the more I say certain things, it reiterated yeah. in my mind and keeps me on the straight and narrow. Exactly. So I tell everybody, don't ever be ashamed of anything you went through. Spread the word. Tell everybody because you don't know who you're you helping. You never know. And it's not your job to know that you're helping the person. Yeah. Plant the seed like what you say and just don't worry about it. Yeah. Just leave it to God and know that it will work itself out. For sure. And then... A lot of times, also, I was just thinking about David for some reason when he was talking. A lot of times, God let your, you know, let your lifestyle be an example to others. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you, you may not tell nobody your testimony. I don't remember him doing that, but crying out to God a lot. And he was a man after God's own heart, according yeah. to what I read. So, but his lifestyle and the things he done is what made him so courageous. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Living in your authenticity. There you go. So. so when did you figure out you wanted to be in the radio industry? 
All right, here we go. You just going to skip over college. Wait a minute. I don't want to go there. Oh, oh, no, 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 so when did you? <laughs> <laughs> so 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 how did you end up going? At, what year? Who with? All that right. because this was a whole movement no, down there. Man, Prairie View was a whole mo- Prairie View. Yes, was a whole movement. It yeah, really you was. niggas was I got, I got there in two thousand six. Yeah, yeah. So that's when things was like kind of like, oh, yeah. what's going on out here? Midday parties yeah. like on Wednesday. What? We skipped class, <laughs> cut class, classic. We wow. cut class and we. In the yard party. So did you get a scholarship? So I did. I actually got a scholarship due to my academics, being number five in my class. Wow. Yeah, I never, like, really talked about it, but I had a scholarship going there. They offered me a partial track scholarship because I was originally going to go to OU. Okay. And at last minute, I was just like... So glad you didn't. I was like, it just didn't resonate for me. And I chose Prairie View without ever seeing the school. Beautiful. So what was was it about Prairie View? Why you chose that? Well, I went to Dunbar. So, you know... All band. your friends were gone. All my friends from band were going to mm-hmm. Prairie, Prairie View. And then you always hear about it. You always see it. We went to the games at the fair. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, that's where I'm going. Wow. I remember pulling up and I'm like, this is where I'm going. Oh, this <laughs> man. Hold up, right. You like, man. You know, Williams Chicken on the corner, you know. And it ain't nothing else but man. country road and That's school. That's all right. That's like, all right. You kicked it. And my dad was like, all right, this is where you go. Oh, he went with you down there. Yeah, my dad. Oh, me dope. and my dad went together for orientation. I'd never seen the school until orientation. Oh, really? Yeah. And so, so I, I went to orientation. What what, what, what was your first, like, um, you know, um, what was your first thoughts the first month that you was there? What did you feel? Can you remember? Can you remember? I can go all the way back to the first day. Oh, yeah, like, that's what I'm saying. How was I it? I remember we were moving in. I wasn't even sad. I was like, ooh, I am ready. You know? <laughs> like, <laughs> to be I'm going to have some fun. Have uh-huh. We're going to have some fun. So it was crazy. The, our move-in day, there was a whole, like, yard party, like, right <laughs> Was that we on a Wednesday? While we were moving in, Paris. What day was it? It was... It was a Saturday. Okay, Everybody had to move oh, in yeah, on they a jumping, Saturday. They jumping on and there's Saturday. a party. There was a party moving in. So I would have I would have like, t- pulled my child to the side and said, You better not be up here party. You better get that school. See, my daddy cool. He you cool like, with it. You so he was love like, it. Like, okay. this be jumping. <laughs> yeah, for you know, real. You did the right it thing. It was a whole barbecue, everything, like a welcome, freshman welcome party in the yard. I was like, Oh, this is what it's about to be. I knew it was setting the tone. Wow. But what was crazy, though, was I was so, like, I got myself in the school. Like, my parents didn't help me. They didn't want to sign off on fast food. They didn't want to do none of that. Although I had lived other places, I was like, can y'all just sign off on this? They would not. Wow. And all they had to do is sign. They wouldn't do it. They didn't want, I don't want it on my credit. I don't want, <laughs> right. But it was a scholarship. But, you know, like, when you, oh, you, you, have to, when you yeah, get loans yeah, and stuff first. like that, they didn't yeah. want that in their name. So I was like, how'd you do it? I'm going to figure it out. I, I applied for all these scholarships. I had so much free money coming in. Wow. Teachers I, helped you? I never really, no, nah, I did it myself. Mm. I just did research. I never really had to come out of pocket for anything. That's Look at good. God. That's but God. you see, if they didn't sign, if they had signed, that wouldn't have even happen. Right. Right. Everything happens for a reason. Yeah, so I had scholarships from all, just random scholarships from all different places that paid for my school. I may have took out 10000 the whole time I was there. And that's did, nothing. Okay, is this where you found your love for the music? We, yeah, per, he keeps like, okay, okay, yeah. So, P- PV was... <laughs> you uh, already loved the music before. Yeah, I, I always, always loved music. Yeah. My daddy is a big, like, big-time uh, vinyl collector. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, he's always listened to music, like, so blasting. You know, yeah. he always had his little sports car blasting music. And yeah. that was, like, always our thing. Um and then I played instruments in middle school of course. all the way up until high school. Okay. But then PV, it was just like a breeding ground for music. I met so many people that like was who? like. Yeah, name them. Well, DeRoe, I don't believe look, you. I would be with I don't Cash, DeRoe, yeah, and name all, all of them. them. I would the be primetime click. The primetime click. I would be in the, what those kind of guys, car was Those it? guys was kind of rowdy. It was an expedition, something. We would be in that expedition. I remember one time we went to Texas A&M, DeRoe performed and everything. And I'm just there like. Had no clue what I was actually like doing there, 
But I was like with the crew. Like, wow. You know, so I you was, really, you're do you, one wait guys. a minute, do you got primetime clip uh, tattooed <laughs> on your back? Because <laughs> that's what, uh, yeah, TJ had TJ it on his back. back. Oh, I said, TJ, shut take up. your damn shirt TJ off. TJ had it on his back? <laughs> he shut showed it to up. me. I was like, damn, you, you did shut it. Shut up, no. <laughs> But I was like always cool with like all the DJs, all the upcoming artists. I was just one Can of those. Can you dance? So were you like a dancer or something? No, nah, nah, she's I was just, just cool. I yeah. felt like I was always like one of those people one that could the, put the pieces together. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Connect people. That that that's what I felt like I always was. I was a promoter at a very young age. Mm. I had a fake ID when I was 15 years old. That's I used good. to. That's I used good to, stuff. I used to be a promoter at Therapy Lounge in Deep Ellum back in the day. <laughs> I think that was a thing back in the day. I think almost everybody yeah. had a fake ID. Well, uh, you nowadays, could get them right down have, there by the yeah, uh, nowadays, right by the police station, anymore. down there by Loose Terry. You could get you a fake ID. You would <laughs> no, get on that brood. Yeah, all them places. I was getting mine like, early on. I was I had, every bit of 16, but I was 27. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah <laughs> kicking it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You could get you that fake ID. Yeah, I had so, a fake ID. And I was promoting and, you know, selling tables and doing all that. So I was always one of those people that. You was one of the people that Bone was talking about on here. Because Bone know said, Bone, no, Bone. <laughs> Say, I'm done. He said that prime time click. He don't know how they was doing what they was doing, <laughs> but he say seemed like they was everywhere he wanted to be. Yo, <laughs> like, like he was like that supposed to be me. You know, I like for song like, came out. I even had friends that like play instruments. Like they were just creative beings. Like behind the scenes I was like automatically drawn to these people. So it wasn't like nothing that was really forced. Like I had a friend that like literally would write music and play guitar and she could play keyboard and wow. but she didn't do anything with, with it but it. it was like I was always attracted to like the creative That's you know dope. what I'm saying mm -hmm. so yeah. it kind of just molded like I say my tribe and it wow. gave it really gave me the confidence to do what I'm doing now yeah. today just being around them seeing people do different things it taught me how to go after it like go get it so what do you do actually let's let's let, let me ask I do you. A, I do a lot of things so I started out uh, <laughs> but no I uh, I started out as a model and an actress so I did that for many many years really? I was signed to Kim Dawson's agency really at 18 months and I That's started a good agency yeah I started in entertainment at such a young age so it was just in me like I couldn't get away from it because that's the thing I was wondering because when you were jumping from house to house yeah you didn't have a part time job or doing yeah, anything I like always that. worked I always yeah, had a worked. job she know how to get to yeah, it yeah I always had a job my first job was that's um, what make you dope because at the Arlington Ballpark oh that was your first job mm -hmm. I used to make I used Ooh. to make the baseball bats Dang, that's, that's networking crazy. right there oh I met so many people there like mm. still to this day I can walk in restaurants I'm like Yo, and like they owning stuff now. Like the people that yeah, was yeah, working yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. it's it's crazy how everything came full circle, but I did that, worked at finish line, worked at YMCA. Story so dope. I just like I braided the way. hair. Fifteen years old, <laughs> getting to it. Oh, I did all kind of stuff. I, I, like, I love I it. think everybody in college, if you're black, everybody braided hair at some point. Oh, in college, college, I had college. three jobs then. I know. Like I, I had a full schedule, still had three jobs. I was and partied like, at the same time. Okay, I did it all. <laughs> you really a yeah. part of the reason why the prime time click you made it. There you go. Let's go and get. We'll just jump all yeah, the way out there. Yeah, yeah. I'm so glad we're that just, shit we're came just jump all the way out oh, there. Yeah. I am so yeah. glad. Promotion all that. and all that. I see what's going on now. Uh, because the road, you came on here. You didn't. You didn't tell me everything. Uh, <laughs> no, but what I'm glad about is the fact that when you all always talked about a prime time click, it was always all these males. You yeah. never used yeah. to hear about any female. So was she I'm here so now? Happy. Yeah, I was like, it was so funny. I ran for what was it, Homecoming Queen or something yeah. like that at Prairie View. I actually recorded. My, I re I decided to do like a little mixtape, right? <laughs> 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 so I was like, y'all, I'm gonna get in the booth. I'm about to rap a little bit. <laughs> who who wrote that rap? Some, I think it was Mike. I think it was Mike and then our friend um, Jorge George. George, yeah, we all linked up and we were recording in that closet and I made a song called Vote for Tasia September 18th. Hey. Had the whole hey. campus saying this every time mm. they see me. And yeah, so I was always, you know, with the crew just kicking it. I was always kind of like in the shadows. I yeah. never really was like that person like at the forefront. Yeah. I just kind of kicked it and chilled. I was cool with everybody. How many other females were around? I don't think there was anybody around. It'd probably be randoms. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I'm about to say, say it'll probably be like random people, but wow. like when it came to like like having like real friends, like those were the homies. Wow. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I love so, it, man. So I was cool with a lot of people though. So you are over you're a part of K one oh four. Yeah, I'm a part of K one oh four. So how how long have you been there? 
I've been there for three years now. Three years yeah. now. Yeah. So two years into me actually teaching myself how to DJ, I wow. got assigned to radio. Really? Mm-hmm. I got discovered. You taught yourself how to DJ. Yeah, I taught myself. So where did no, you play during that time? No, somebody had to play part in that. Nobody. Nobody taught me how to DJ. So, so what were you serious? No, serious. What was the you biggest did, gig I, okay, you so got during that time? For a minute. Stop, so look, stop, I had stop. a friend's house. She was like a DJ a couple years back. And okay. I used to go to her house to use her equipment just to teach myself in between my jobs. Okay. And she would just tell me like, oh, that sounds good. Or this and this and that. But nobody physically taught me how to DJ. No. Really? I like that. Mm-mm. So, so you self-taught? The, self-taught. Ah, what was the biggest it. gig yeah. you got during that time when you was DJing? Um, what, what time? Like at the beginning? Phases? At the beginning phases. Oh, I DJ with Manny Fresh. What? For, for um yeah. And that was before for the Fat, radio. For Fat Tuesday. No, it was I got I'm talking within that two years you said you did before you got signed oh, to Oh, before radio. I got signed to radio. Okay. That was my first big gig though, like with That's radio dope, was with bro. Manny Fresh. Mm-hmm. Manny um, Fresh. We did Fat Tuesdays at House of Blues. I'm gonna wow. ask him one day. Yeah, it was trip. dope. It was I promise dope. You I'm I got asking. pictures, videos. I ain't tripping, mm-hmm. I'm gonna ask him. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna find it. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, KLC was on here already. I'm, I'm close. I'm close. I'm done. KLC was already on here with Beats by the Pound. Shut yeah, up. Yeah, I rock with these folks. I'm going to find that nigga. It's coming. Shut oh, up. it's coming. I'm going to ask that nigga what you <laughs> You so, funny. So I know it's real. Like, yeah. I need to know from okay. him. From, mm-hmm. I want to get it from the horse's mouth. At House of Blues, <laughs> okay. Fat Tuesday. I'm not going to forget. Okay. You don't have to worry about All that. All right, now. So, I'm trying to figure out how okay, did you yeah. get signed to that. That's why okay, I'm asking so, about the big gig. Um, I wouldn't necessarily say that I had like big gigs, but I'm also very hard on myself. So asking me that, it's just like, was it really that big? You know, there but you go. I did different events with like Victoria's Secret, you know, stuff like That's that. Big. Um, Makeup mm-hmm. Forever. I did gigs at North Park and stuff like that. Um, but I actually had got really, I wouldn't say I got cool because I was always cool with a lot, everybody in, in Dallas, although I'm not from Dallas, I was cool mm-hmm. with everybody, you know? And from being a promoter once, I just reached out to the promoter homies and I was like, yo, I'm DJing now. Everybody's like, girl, get out of here. Like, Tasia, no, you not. Wouldn't even pay attention to me. But it was one group, uh, co-op, they actually, I sent them over like a little mix that I did and they listened to it while they was just, you know, chilling. They was like, this you? Like, wow. you did this? And I was like, yeah, I've been, I told y'all I've been DJing. They was like, shoot, when you ready to DJ then? I'm like, oh, no, I ain't ready yet. But I really was. I was just, I was so afraid. Nervous. I was so nervous. So I waited a whole year <laughs> while I was teaching myself, and they actually gave me my first opportunity to take on a residency. Wow. So from there, I just, I just grew from there. I was all over the place. I was in all of the nightclubs. All of the bars, like all of the major parties and stuff like that, but they gave me my opportunity. And that's how the radio saw you. That's how the radio saw me. That's what I was uh, trying to figure out. Like, how did how did yeah, that opportunity got, open um, up? You know the spot over there off of Ross called uh, the Ranch. The it's Ross. called XOXO now. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, one. that's where I was discovered. Wow, that's mm. dope. On a man. random. And who discovered you? DJ Steve Nice. That's what's up. Oh. Man. So on a random, I think it was like a Wednesday or something like that. Nobody was in there. So you was working. I, I was working. That's I was what matters. It, and he was just like. How did you feel when he came came to you with that like, opportunity? Me? Like, am I ready for this? No, 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 no. You know, I second guessed myself. Yeah, I know like, you did. I'm new. Like, you should have just like been like, I'm new. from the primetime click. Uh, you know what? <laughs> 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 this nigga don't know what he just I done. I'm going to take this thing over. I you know? am <laughs> done. You're like, I'm the first lady of the primetime. I'm yeah, the, right? not the first lady. <laughs> the first lady, <laughs> yeah. Now we can get it started over done. there. I'm <laughs> done with y'all. So, not the first lady. So you uh, Bill Bellamy's co- cousin? Yeah. That's my cousin. Wow. How, do you? I mean, you talk to him often? I actually do talk to him. Like, whenever he comes in Dallas. Let that nigga know. He lets me know. Nigga. <laughs> let him know. <laughs> like, boss ahead. talk is a thing. You know what I'm talking about? Just let him know boss yes. talk is a thing. Right? That'll be kinda, that would be kind of dope. Get no, I'm, uh, hey, I'm, I'm working with a lot of people. You better try to, hey, you better get in before I blow up. <laughs> okay, tell him to get it while it's hot. Okay. No, so what you I, think about, what you think about a platform? I love it. I really? like that it's... Um, it's it's real. It's genuine. How, it's authentic. It's just having conversation. It doesn't feel forced. It doesn't no. feel like, you know what I mean. Like mm-hmm. you know, I've been on plenty of podcasts, but it feels like it's so like, it's so to the point. You know, it's not like where it allows the conversation to just wander and just yeah. go free. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. And I'm a talker, so mm-hmm. like I I can yeah. talk. I don't want to be put in the box where yeah. it's like. 
this question. But yeah. you miss so much good because one thing I've realized by doing it the way how we do it. Yeah. We hear some stories that have <laughs> never been told. I know you'd be like, what? Yeah. No, but and I mean, then, I know and then the funny right, thing you. is that some people will call us back afterwards and say, I don't know how y'all got that out of me. Or don't put that part in there. Or don't in put there. that yeah, part out. Hell yeah, because don't put that part I don't know in there. I'm real with it and I'm true to it. Like, yeah, for real. Like, no, I am who I am. Yeah, I've heard. I've had some people, but because they was like, this is about to happen big for me and I don't want to put that out yet. Don't put it out yet. Because sometimes you can pull something out of somebody and they don't know in that moment. When we do it, it's not like we know what we're pulling out. It just comes out. And I feel that. God gives us the spirit of I want to make people feel comfortable, welcome, yeah, to yeah. feel like they're a part of the family. Well, right? you, you really I mean? is welcome, and if yes, you're I mean, not, we have welcome. had somebody that was kind of in, you know, tightened up, and I didn't put the video out, but it was they was depressed, and I knew it, Ooh, and, I, and I didn't want to put tough. it out, but. At some point, I'm gonna drop it. Mm-hmm. But, you should, but because that's somebody in real time. I think I think it would do him. He probably was waiting on it. I don't know, you but it just know. seemed like he was going through a lot. Remember that? Mm-hmm. You know exactly. But it what might. I'm I know about. what you're talking about, but you never know. By putting it out too, it might make certain people reach out to him to, you know. Yeah. Help. Shout out True. to Young Jock. <laughs> you know what? I'm done. It's going down. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm tripping. I'm done. No, no just, young you know, Yeah, yeah. It was some things but that went on. He, he was it's involved in, though. He was I mean, involved in. Shout out to Young Jock. Holla at me. I'm at Boss Talk 101. We will be back down there in three months. No. <laughs> so, well, y'all, so, y'all so y'all we travel. just went to Atlanta. We yeah. just started traveling. Uh, I lived there for a while. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah, we kicked it down. And her brother lives there. How so do you I said, like it? I, I I do like it. I actually okay. miss it a lot. What? Um, you I in do. Dallas. You need to calm no, down. No, I do. I miss it a lot because it taught me so much about entrepreneurship. How long did you live there for? I stayed there for two and a half years. What and made I, you come back? And what made you go there in the first What place? made me go there was chasing a dream. Okay. I, I wanted to take a leap of faith. And I felt like, yo, I've been here for so long. Like, If I need to come back, I can come back. Mm-hmm. So I, I left and I had a vision. How old were you? This is after college. Yeah, this is after college. I was a uh, twenty five okay. when I went to Atlanta. This was before the DJ. This was before right. DJ. That's right. why God had something He wanted to do with yeah, you. Yeah, this this was way before yeah, DJing yeah. was mm-hmm. even a thought. Um, I had went out there. I was like, I'm gonna just move. Like I'm yeah. gonna just take a leap of faith. I knew I wanted to get into acting. I knew that I wanted to be on the game. Like I knew everything that I wanted to do. I wrote it down. A month after living there, I got signed with BT, and I was on the game. I worked on there all the way until they closed it out. I worked did, with Brandy. Did Bill help you get that job? No. My cousin won't help me get no job. What? He was like, I want to see you do it for yourself. He's told me that before. Wow, I like it. And I was like, on some respect, like, I, I'm cool with it. You know? You should be proud of He's like, build you. yourself up. I don't, that's why a lot of people don't even know my last name. I don't use my last name on purpose. Your last mm-hmm. name Bellamy? My last name is Bellamy. Oh, damn. So this is your daddy's brother. Well, he is a third cousin. Okay. Uh, with our family that's like on the East Coast. Okay. Yeah. Uh, they've talked about it before. I don't know the exact, you know. Yeah, but you know, that's okay. We'll get him when we get him but, right now. We wrote. Yeah, my last name is. You Bellamy. have done a great job with your career. You're so mm-hmm. special and you're talented. And uh, yeah, you from the prime time click before <laughs> that. Yeah, that's what we want to keep on so saying. Done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the part I want everybody <laughs> I to get. Am da- yeah, Dallas stand up. She from the prime the time click. click. Oh my so, god! But how did it feel? How did it feel when you got that position with BT? Um, I was just like, whoa! Like I. Dr- that's a big deal. Yeah, I dreamed of it. Did like, you know what's the really woman name? Who? The one they always talk about in reality TV. What's her name? The one that, what's her name? Mona Scott? Mona Scott. Yeah. Yeah. You knew her. I never met Mona okay. Scott. Okay. I, I did just, I just met, the, I, I knew, hear her name I knew, a lot. Like, uh, you probably know Salim McKeel. Yeah. Mara Brock McKeel. They okay. did Girlfriends and yeah. all of that. Yeah, yeah. I know them, like, first That's what's up. Yeah, so I man. worked with them. They were the producers of the game. But you look like you could do that stuff. Thank you. Man, I, I loved it. Yeah, I, I, I could tell. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. There's more, there were so much opportunity like so that much. there. So why move back here and not just yeah. jump to another show? Man, yeah, so it was crazy. I went through um, a pretty bad breakup. And a that, lot nigga, of, that nigga hurt you. And a, and a lot of life changes. And so I was like, you know what? Let me go How back. How long were y'all together for? Um, 
two years. So I was there for two and a half years. So yeah, two yeah, years. He missed out on something special. And you just wanted to just get away from him. Better believe it. Out on better, some, nigga, that nigga come to it. Dallas. Do you know? You know he knows it. Oh God, <laughs> I messed up. <laughs> oh, no, oh God. <laughs> but yeah, um, so I was like, you know, I'm gonna come back home. I came back home, and I was actually homeless. A lot of people didn't know that. What? I was homeless. I came back homeless. What did what did you say? And you Prime time click no, but hold up. on, but hold on. Wait a minute. Yeah. You the type of person that you all you have people you could stay with. Yeah. You have people that you okay, can have, I feel but that. you just Prime. like I don't wanna deal with nobody. I don't wanna Prime. I can I, feel that from yeah, you. Yeah, I am like that. Like let me just get it because I don't wanna owe nobody. Well let me ask you this, homeless woman. Where What's did you, up? Where Look, did you I stay? ain't homeless no more. Where okay? did you stay when you was homeless? Uh I actually stayed in my car for a while. That's dope. When you said for a while Two days, uh, days, a couple weeks. Two it was, weeks. It was a, it was a good like three, four weeks. All the great stay in their car. Yeah, you I, in a good class. Look, look, <laughs> I, look, I used to find, I look, I used to find all like safe them. places I could park. Yeah, you know, to sleep yeah, at night because I was great. like, you, I all all the the you all great. safe places. I would park in in apartment parking lot. Yeah, you didn't watch Mr. Deeds. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> You remember that? Nah, for real. Yeah, it gets real. Yeah. But you have somebody come yeah. and knock and be like, hey. Yeah, they do it. So Hopefully it's a millionaire. I, I slept in my car for a while. I stayed with friends. I was couch surfing, you know. Wow. I was staying in hotels. And I everything. like it, Did man. you get a, what was the job that you so got? So what's got crazy back? was when I got back, I was like, yo. Because I did like a lot of assistant sty styling when I was in Atlanta. So I was like, when I come here, I'm going to just style. So I did a Southern Dallas magazine. Wow. And that was my first gig when I got back. So I was like, I'm a stylist. You know what wow. I'm saying? I just came yeah, out as that. Yeah. So I started doing that, and I was styling people. A lot of people didn't know about that. And then I just started getting random jobs. I was a manager at UPS. I was a manager at a hair store. Which one? The one off Samuel? <laughs> the one in Fort Worth. Oh, yeah, because I was <laughs> off Samuel, man. Yeah. So you yeah. were staying in, went back no, to Fort Worth? No, oh. I was actually staying in Arlington at the time. Okay. So I had a job in Fort Worth, and I had two jobs in Dallas. That's mm. what's up. So I would go back and forth, back and forth, UPS would be at the end of the day. You know what wow. I'm saying? So I had the two jobs. You don't have no kids. No, no kids. Yeah, but you. what kind of yeah. car was that you were sleeping in? Ooh, what car did what? I have? Ooh, I had a white Honda. Yeah, yeah. That I thing, sure did. You can let the seat all the way back. All the way. <laughs> so I'm talking about Look, man. no automatic seat. You better let it down <laughs> yourself. <laughs> so where did you go and take a shower? A uh, hotel, a friend's house. Like okay. friend's house and stuff like that. Like a lot of times, like I say, I was couch surfing. I was going to different people's house. No, but I'm talking when you were friend. living in your car for those two weeks. Oh, yeah. Where did you go? The gym. The gym. Gas station. Yeah. I had a, I had a gym station, membership. Gas I would station. go to the gym. Okay. Yeah, it's hard when you're homeless. You know, mm -hmm. I know you can't exp understand. No, because it. when I think about somebody homeless, I'm thinking about you can't even afford a gym. No, membership. no, no. They got a, she so got you, a car. Yeah, you, you know, like there's levels of homelessness. There is some <laughs> levels to this. Levels, you know, you see What's people that? in LA, they be living in tents and got right. cell phones. That's same right. Time. <laughs> <laughs> With a double apartment, got a two bedroom. Right. Tent. Oh, yeah, oh. It go, yeah, it go down. You know I they can only video. afford. You know they can only afford. What they got? Yeah, yeah that. It's and all then, good. You know, when it comes to housing, they, they ain't got it. Can't get up I mean, I wasn't high. homeless for very long. It was about two months. Two months. Yeah, but then I got right back to it. Yeah, because I left so abrupt. You know, I just left. Yeah, mm -hmm. we ain't talking about me, but I went through a spell too. Yeah. But I was robbing. Yeah, yeah you I, was yeah. robbing. Yeah, I was robbing. Yeah. Young. You know what I'm saying, but yeah. I wasn't finna be. I was homeless, but I did, couldn't tell because I was too busy breaking in houses and stuff. And just I, <laughs> I'm done. Well, I was in everybody else's house. I didn't He's feel like, homeless. We gonna be alright. <laughs> <laughs> we gonna be alright. No, I, doing... you you do go through things when you're young, and and that's the part about growing up, right? That's mm -hmm. so so dope, right? Yeah. Because you can look back on things that you went through. Somebody else that's homeless that moving from house to house may see this video, yeah. and they be like, uh, or this podcasting, or hear it on Apple Podcasting, yeah. and and. And next thing you know, they uh, find a way out of this situation because of you. I yeah, I'm I'm being real. That's, yeah. What it's, that's what it's Bro, all like, about. I'm not ashamed of where I came no, from. No, I love it. That, you know what I'm saying? A lot of people don't want to share their story because they haven't really dealt with themselves. They haven't really faced themselves. They haven't looked at themselves in the mirror. So to be accepting of your life that you lived, you have to really face yourself. And a lot of people run from themselves. Wow. That's true. And I always say your story is a testimony yeah. for somebody else, to help somebody else. Yeah. It's not for yourself. Yeah, for real. It's for somebody else. But I love the fact that you've been... Because when I think about BET working over there and yeah. all that, you up here. Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. But then and down then, here. Yeah. And a lot of people who come all the way down be like... Yeah. yeah. 
trying to hide. Don't want it. nobody to know that this is where they yeah, ended I up. Yeah, I didn't hide nothing. But your story is dope. You could be Thank a co-host at Boss Talk 101. <laughs> Look, okay, <laughs> just invite me back. You know, I'll be here. Yeah, yeah, every time. I'll be we, here. Because that backstory is what makes the thing work. Yeah. And yeah, that's what yeah. people don't realize. It's pretty you know? crazy. Yeah, yeah. If I start telling you mine, you might not come back. Uh, sure. Know? Yeah, I'm, I'm one of them type dudes. <laughs> I'm but, done. But, but so, who, who have you met that when you met them, it was a star-studded moment? Ooh, you know, um, like, Kanye West. I wish you I could meet that nigga. Like, stop, man. Yeah, I met Kanye West in Atlanta. Oh, how did it go? Tell me about it. Was dope. Look, I, look how people say, like, like we ended up, me, we know. ended up like chopping it up in the back, uh, cause um, we were back there for some reason. But I'm, I'm really cool with like a lot of people from Rock Nation and stuff like that. that yeah. work with Rock Nation. Yeah. So when I started talking about Jay Z, you felt some type of way. Yeah, but you couldn't do nothing about it because we didn't stop. No, no. So we were back there in the back, and Kanye, he was just chilling or doing something. I can't remember, but. I was like, I went up to him and I was like, yo, can I just take it? He's like, of course, come on, like, take a picture with me. Everybody's oh, like, wow. how is he so cool with you? Cool with you. And he smiled in the picture and everything. It was like, he don't be smiling. No, you God, know? God gave you faith. And it the was, vibe. Yeah, the it was vibe. one of them things. It was just like, a, it was a moment that was just so cool. And we all went back there and drank Duce and, and kicked you know, it. did all the things. So that was like, kicked it. yeah, that was one of the. Um, highlight moments. Yeah, highlight moments. In but of life. course, working with Brandy was like so You work with Brandy? On the game, yeah. Yeah, you, you met. She uh, was you met Ray movie. J. Did you? You I met didn't Ray, mean, Ray Damn, J. Look, Ray J. Never care. I, I love Ray, Ray, Ray J. Ray. <laughs> <laughs> I love Ray J. You know, uh, okay. Brandon, I just skated right past. I so love know. Ray J. But no, Brandy was a, an amazing she person. She seemed real cool. She was an amazing person to work with. She used to always pull me aside and she'd be like, You don't belong behind the camera. Like, really? Oh, all the time. She'd be like, You belong in front of the camera. She's like, I don't know what you going to do. She's like, But you don't belong behind. You're going to have to come in the forefront. She's really? always telling me that. Yeah, she's like, You don't belong behind the scene. Wow. You belong in front of the camera. So she's she easy to work with. Very easy to work wow. with. Wow. So cool. Just that's why she always getting gigs. No, seriously. That's why she stays booked. Exactly. Really? Amazing soul. Yeah, amazing soul. Like for real. So yeah, them the two that. But really that's something stick. that sticks them with me too. Like right. Right. her telling me that. But that's that why moment. it's very pivotal for us to touch other people's life. Even if it's just a sentence you say yeah. to somebody, something positive, yeah. it stays with them forever. You just don't know because yeah. she doesn't know until she listens to Boss Talk One Hundred and One to okay. know. Hey. Look, Brandy, we are gonna send this over to you. Hey, wait, wait. <laughs> you see what I mean? And I'll let my boy for me, but Ray J. You know, we just we gonna fan out right quick. Okay. Check it. <laughs> so, um, top three artists of no, all time. I want to ask. Uh -uh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Go ahead. Go ahead. Top three artists of all Any time. Genre. Dead Any or alive. Genre. Any genre. Any genre. Top know how three hard artists. It is? Not, not everybody has been on the show and done it. So let's go. Male or female, anybody. Ooh. And you can put Bob Marley in it. That's cool. What? Okay, I, you know what? You better not put. I love me some Bob. Okay? <laughs> I do love me some Bob. Okay, so yeah, artists. Okay, so let's go. Damn, Come on. that's so Number hard. Number one. I'm gonna go with Prince. Okay. Twenty seven instrument playing Prince. Oh, let's I go. Love Turn up. Number I two. Love Prince. I said um, I could have picked that. I know you look like a Prince fan. I love Prince. You look like one. I, I could have told you that before you even picked. I used to, I used to lie over, to everybody like over. Prince, my daddy, y'all. <laughs> you you know what you and that you nigga comment from Prince? Michael. <laughs> that nigga I used to might everybody be. like Prince, my daddy. Everybody like, Tasha, shut up. <laughs> like, Prince ain't your daddy. Okay, number two. Uh, number two, I definitely gotta go with Kanye West. I'm a definitely. That's okay. dope. I'm I like. A, I like I'm a Kanye, Kanye West fan. Yeah, me too. For sure. Me too. And especially after meeting him, right? No, yeah. I'm Kanye. Well, I'm, even before that. Like all layers, all layers of Kanye is I'm I'm down with. Yo, it. in high school, like Everything. when I used to say, you know, at these different people's house, I play that college dropout record so much they'd be oh. like, shut up, like they just turn it off. I'll be listening to spaceships over and over <laughs> and over and over. And like Tasia, turn this off. I'm tired of listening to That's it. So dope. definitely Kanye West for sure. Kanye number West three. number two. Ooh, number three. You know, everybody normally goes with Beyonce, but I have a very favorite artist of all time, Amy Winehouse. Amy I like, Winehouse. I like her. She like her. I yeah. like her. I love her. So have you ever heard of her bad. best That's friend named Julia Ashby? Mm -mm. So she actually has like a reggae sound. You need to look her up. Her name is Julia, Julia Ashby. Ashby. Okay. And she actually recorded in a lot of the studios that Bob Marley recorded. How much in. music huh? you got in that head of yours? Ooh, it's too it's much. It's a lot. It's a lot. I listen to all types of things. Like I know. Bar, I can like believe that. My favorite. Me too. Which one you like, girl? Oh, um, did you listen to him when he was with that first group? 
What? what sw- switch? Wasn't it, wasn't it switch? No, said, yeah. my daddy has those records. Though. Yeah, yeah. I need to go ahead and steal, yeah. steal some yeah. of those. I call your name, girl. I call your name. I know that. I know that. Stop playing, man. Yeah, that's yeah. switch. I didn't know that. You don't do it. I thought I you was on this. Man, cut the damn play. No, I don't cut it. I'll keep it on. You <laughs> see, I know, I, know, I, know, I know songs. I don't always know who sing it, but I know songs. I'm the same way. I play switch a lot, and she don't even like the song because I play it so much. For real? But let me tell you about him. <laughs> that was my song, but let man. me tell you about him. Like, I like okay. If you play a song, I, it takes me a minute to figure out what the song is. Oh. You can play the song for two seconds. He already know yeah, what it means. Is. Yeah, I know. I'm you like, play one beat. I mean, just the beat. Yeah, yeah, you don't hear it. the words. <laughs> I gotta hear. I'm like, hold on. Let the song start, and then I can tell you what. Okay, yeah. no, that's, that's it. Look, that's a night. DJ ear. Now, just knowing. I just love music. Yeah. Like it's been that way for me. Like I ride before rap started. When mm-hmm. it ended, uh, it ain't ended yet, but it's a lot of garbage out here that these mm-hmm. niggas doing, but it's some good stuff. I do stuff agree. Too. You know what I'm saying? But I said, when it ended, hip hop is not dead. Mm-hmm. Let's stop playing. Mm-hmm. Hip hop is not dead. Yeah. It, ain't going, it ain't going nowhere. It ain't going, it ain't going nowhere. nowhere. Because it's not trying to be funny, but these white folks trying to steal it from us. Not exactly. only are they trying to steal they it, they're stealing everything. it. The culture, they're not, everything. They're not going to be able to do they that. Can, you can't emulate us. Mm-hmm. I could say something, but I'm gonna let Eminem make it tonight. I love you. Know, I'm not like trying Eminem. to tell you that because these niggas would say. Look, after yeah, I done said get, Amy Winehouse, <laughs> <laughs> they're giving the torch like Eminem the best I'm rapper dead. ever. I'd be like, are you serious? Okay, yeah, I like, can't agree. They be with doing that, that though. A lot of people do that, and it's a lot of people. And I, the people, you'd be amazed at the music and the people that they've met, and they still say that. And I'd be yeah. like, how could they say that? That's just so difficult to like narrow down to the best this and the best mm-hmm. that because everybody's so. But it's your special best. in their own unique but it's oh, unique. your yeah. personality it's you're right. your your preference you're right everybody I mean, has a different air everybody Eminem can rap I ain't right. taking nothing away this from him this is true but he's just when I think of people like even Lil Wayne or anybody oh, now Wayne is one of my favorites yeah you, you can't compare the two but he wasn't in your top three he wasn't my top yeah. three or, or of course Pimp C is my favorite ever yeah, yeah. he loves UGK like I don't, even, really? yeah, I don't sure. even play about that <laughs> that's like almost his number I don't one. even it. play about I that love it. don't play with me about that let's just move on okay I because love this it. is not nothing to play with okay. you do not want to go down that <laughs> I road I like UGK too I gotta have it okay so my next question to you mm-hmm. is being in the industry that you're in, as I said, you meet a lot of people. Mm-hmm. In the radio industry as well, you hear a lot of stories. Mm-hmm. What is a person you've met that was like so heart touching when you heard their story? Oh, heart touching when I heard their story. Maybe yeah, you haven't gotten think, it yet. Yeah, maybe I haven't gotten it. Yeah, yet. I got enough. Because question. that should come on the top of your head. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, something that's just like, you because you, you meet so many people. You do. Meet, in that yeah, industry. you do. I meet a lot of people. And she's and I'm such an open think, book, so she mm-hmm. would have knew it right off. I, I definitely would Yeah, but. I think a lot of times I'm more so the person with the story that. I, your story is dope. That's why I'm glad. I didn't know all this. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like putting it yeah, out there for yeah, people. Thank and you people so always much. come back to me and they're just like, yo, like. I didn't know. Yeah, or they're like, Oh, I thought that you was from North Dallas and everything was handed to you and yeah, you really got yeah. you know all this that you came from. And so. it's so funny because people look at looks. Yeah. And right yeah. that Yeah, y'all looking good up in and that's right crazy. Now. You know, know what I'm saying? saying? Don't even know like I'm what you've been loving this vibe. I'm like, looks have, sure what you've looks done. Yeah, y'all doing y'all thing right now. Looks have nothing to do with what you have or what you don't have or anything like that. But some people feel like if you have looks, you should have an upper hand. Just like some people think that People mm-hmm. say, if you're white, like you have to, yeah, you have that privilege over somebody who's black. Yeah, yeah, that's true. The same thing as if you're pretty, oh, you should never have to do without. You should never have to, you know. Yeah. Yeah, nah. it's crazy. I couldn't see you look cute still just running around homeless. Man, <laughs> look, I didn't act like it. You ain't about to see me you ain't homeless. Gonna know. You ain't about to know nothing. I'm about to keep it together. Oh, I love it, man. Okay. So how hard is it for a woman, a beautiful woman like yourself, to be in these industries and dealing mm. with these people and the difficulties of how and to keep sometimes, it professional. Sometimes some opportunities are missed True. maybe yeah. behind certain situations. I mean, I'm going in right now. Yeah, I'm just you are all in it because Ooh, it's I happening. So I know it. It's ways, in there, boy. I can answer this from like my my um, earlier years, and yeah. I can answer it now. Go and ahead. Go, go ahead. And give us both. both ways. Yes. Okay. So earlier years, yes, it was tough. It was tough because I was just like, I still wanted to be my feminine self and not be so hard. Like yeah. you know, like not having to be like, give me my money, you know, yeah. but give me my money. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like learning how to. 
work with so many different types of people and personalities and all these things it took a lot of patience yeah so i just say even with dj and dj has taught me so much patience like just how to deal with people but one thing that helped me like in my younger years was going back to like thinking in my corporate mind yeah. you know what i'm saying like the problem solving part mm -hmm. you know like going back to that is what helped me get through a lot of those moments wow. and it was really really hard because it's like people trying to flirt with you or come at you or hey can you do that like they want favors from you mm -hmm. because they feel like you need them in yeah, order to yeah. work and stuff like that so i can say yes it was much difficult starting out because it's like you almost have to prove yourself you have yeah. to you have to come with something they gotta you gotta they gotta see that you really are about what you mm -hmm, talk like mm -hmm. what you're talking about or what people are praising you to be so now that I'm in this space, years later, I've gained that respect just by always showing up as 100% myself, mm -hmm, one. Mm -hmm. Two, people know I really do not play. Like, don't play with my money. One, I'm one of those people that when I show up, I always do a little extra. I always do a little bit more. So you going to get your money worth. I'm not about to cheat you, but you are going to have to pay me. And it was just learning how to put my foot down without having to be aggressive. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, just... And it, it just, it comes with, how can I put this? After you show people who you are, your clientele is based off of like what you put out, like the energy that you put out. So I don't really have to put up with too much craziness or anything like that. Now, do people try to talk to me? I mean, I feel like that's going to be something that happens more, yeah. all the time. I you wish, know, I wish more women was like that because they they don't. That's the part where they still a lot try of women to back it down. Out. A lot yeah. of women back down like they feel like. They don't really know their worth. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, they don't know it, so they back down or feel like they have to take less money and stuff like that. I've never been that person. Yeah. I've never been the DJ to undercut a DJ. Yeah. Or do anything like that. Like, I came in, I knew my worth, and I was like, yo, this is this. But I also have a tribe of people around me that keep me in check. Yeah. Like, know your worth, Tasia. No, you need to be charging this. You need to be doing that. So when you have the right people around you, it's not hard to maneuver and navigate through the entertainment business. You mm, know what I'm saying? Mm. I built those relationships over the past probably like 12 years. It's dope. Uh, you, um, so if you could go back to that 15 year old girl mm. who had to move out and had to go on <laughs> her own and had to go through everything that you had to go through, mm -hmm. what would you say to her? Um, ooh. So to help her to prepare for what she was yeah, about to face. Yeah, so many things. Um, you ain't got no name. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. I remember so many times I would just be afraid to even speak out, yeah. speak up, yeah. or show up as my true self. I knew I was different. I knew I wasn't like everybody else. But a lot of times, my exterior, I had to put on a whole different, you know. Trying to fit in. Yeah. Trying to make people accept. In a sense, yeah. like, make people accept who I was. I've always been But as a young different. girl, a lot of people don't really know who them they they are. That's true. They're searching for themselves because even like you said, you didn't know what you wanted to be and all of that. Yeah. It's when you got older and really left college that you really, it just, everything started coming to you like yeah. that. What's crazy mm. is though, it's like even with what I'm doing now, I feel like I still always had the idea of what industry I would be in. I just didn't know what I was going to do. Mm. You know, like I always said, well, I'm a design clothes. I'm going to have a music group. Or I'm going to do, do this. And, you know, I'm going to be a producer. I'm gonna do, I always knew I wanted to be in entertainment. I just didn't know what it was I was supposed to do. I remember in college, I used to always want to be in, like, the pageants and stuff like that. But I never had a talent. I'm like, what would I do? Mm -hmm. Like, what would I, what would I show up and do? I'm not about to do a poem. I'm not about to get up here and dance or, you know, nothing like that. I was like, what is Tasia? And I, I remember that. asking myself that then because... I could get up there and answer all the questions all day and probably blow you out the water. But I had no, I didn't have a talent yeah, that I could showcase. Yeah, yeah. So that was something I was always in search of. Wow. So what time do you go on when you DJ on the radio? Uh, so I'm on there on weekends for the weekend block party on K104. Um, Friday I'm on 12 to 2. Saturday I'm on, hold on. Fridays I'm on 10 to 12. Saturdays I'm on 12 to 2. And then Sundays I'm on 6 p.m. and then 12 to 2 again. How can people get a hold of you? You can contact me on IG. That's Tasia Alexa. A lot of people say it wrong. Tasia Alexa. It's Tasia Alexa. That's T A Z I A A L E X A. I know because when I first heard Tasia, I'm looking up T A Y. T A S I A. Right. Yeah, my mom, you know, had to make it funky. She had to make it a little different, you know? Tasia, we love you. We thank you for coming on Boss Talk 101. It's going down. 
on, man. Anytime. Check it, man. It's been another great segment mm -hmm. of Boss Talk 101. <laughs> and we out.